Just uh, give us an update on how practice is going. I know that there's a lot of things in play, but what's the mood? Uh, how things? Yeah, been things have been good. I mean, we're, we're, we've got a, a group that's working. Um, you know, like everybody else, you know, a little bit injury bug this time of year in college basketball. Uh, but you know, in general, uh, really enjoyed the way the guys have worked. You know, um, so it's been, they've been super receptive, and we're learning each other, and they're learning me, I'm learning them, our staff. So uh, no, it's been good. I mean, that part of it every day has been a joy to come to work with these guys. Your first year as a head coach here. What have other men, what have mentors told you about that first year as far as little you know? Marks yeah, in? yeah, it's fine. Obviously, Coach L, you know, talked to him a lot about it. I had Jeff Van Gundy here today, who's a guy I've, I've, I've uh, leaned on throughout the years. Um, you know, I think we've got to, you know, just find a way to uh, play winning basketball. You know, and sometimes when you are playing winning basketball, that doesn't mean you win. Right, but you doing the things that go into winning, you know, the things that you can control, as they say. So, you know, we're, we're playing defense and you know, rebounding and sharing the ball and you know, playing hard, playing with purpose. Um, you know, if we can get to that point, uh, th I think that's a good start for us in the first year. Every time there's a transition, there's always new players coming in, but five yeah. of your top seven guys, minute-wise, from last year yeah. are back. How, does that assist with the transition? Because these yeah. guys, they, they're, yeah. they're learning you, but they know each other. Yeah, I think for me, the benefit of not, you know, having a, a, a mass exodus, per se, where that has happened a little bit in college basketball, is there, there is some continuity. We do have an older group. I don't, we have some experience. Uh, we have a lot of guys that have been in college maybe don't have a ton of experience, but uh, in terms of playing. But, uh, yeah, I think it's been great for me to have an older group. Not, not a lot of younger guys to bring along within the transition, uh, really, Max is sort of really the only one because he sat out last year at Kansas State, so he's almost like a freshman again, but everybody else, um, you know, has, 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 in some ways, they play for three college coaches, right? Like a lot of guys, so I think that they're used to, you know, having a coach come in and implementing some sort of system. Cardell, Marcus, you guys got Yeah, uh, there was a song this summer at the Kennedy League, uh, and it was, clear that he improved a lot offensively. You know, he took his time, he yeah. just got to his spot, yeah. and then finished inside. Uh, just talking about his growth over the summer. Yeah, he's, you know, he did a great job getting his body uh, really in great shape. Uh, he's been very diligent as a worker, um, has, he's had a great attitude. And, you know, I read some of the stuff, I obviously didn't see it, but, you know, was encouraged to hear that he was having some success this summer, and that allowed for him to you know, I think bring that confidence into the into the spring kind of fall you know practice season and uh, you know with Hunter out uh, it's given him an opportunity to you know get a ton of reps and, and hopefully you know for a guy uh, big guys you know it takes them longer a lot of times so to get this amount of reps you know in the in the fall practice season I think it's been good for him as well. And uh, one more question, Daniel Nixon, you just um, talked about Max Edwards. Uh, yeah. What do you expect from them? They're, they're, I know they're younger players. Guys. Yeah, man, those guys are younger players that you know have yet to make any sort of mark, uh, you know, in college basketball. So they're being evaluated every day, you know, in practice. And you know, the good news for those guys is there's great opportunity. Uh, you know, our backcourt is is not deep, and so there's opportunity for those guys to come to, to compete for minutes. As far as your staff, how, what's your philosophy in using your assistants? Do they kind of get an area of focus? How do you assign roles and responsibilities yeah. to them? Yeah, no, yeah, we, we sort of, and we did it a little bit differently at, at Miami and George Mason, but we have one coach that's sort of in charge of the scout uh, of the opponent all the time. So he scouts the whole you know, season of the opponent scout. And then, uh, and then we have one uh, that's in charge of the offense, one that's in charge of the defense, and then coaches within the staff that kind of work with them through that. Um, you know, for us, we are inclusive though. So it's not like, you know, we're not delegating and saying, hey, we're not paying attention to this, right? We're ultimately, you know, it's my responsibility uh, mm -hmm. for how the team performs. And those guys are have a tremendous amount of input uh, and respect for me in terms of their acumen. Uh, but ultimately it's very collaborative and we're able to talk through all these things. But just from a workflow standpoint, it's important to give people certain things. And is there, is, are you, at where you would th think that you would be here in this part of the calendar? Are you behind or you, what's your um, implementation? You know what? Just unfortunately, we just, again, and again I, I understand that everyone's kind of gone through this, but, you know, the summer we were pretty knock on wood injury free. And so uh, the full group was able, I mean, we were able to do a good bit with the, with the full group.
unfortunately, we just have not been that way in the, in the fall, especially, you know, to be honest, in the last two and a half weeks where you're sort of gearing up to play, we've gotten hit with the injury bug and the COVID bug. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's not, um, it's not a proprietary information, right? But mm -hmm. so we've had a little bit of that. And so my hope was that we would be really ready um, and have built some chemistry going into the first exhibition mm -hmm. uh, and the first scrimmage with the whole group. We haven't quite gotten that way. It may take us a little bit longer. Hopefully, knock on wood, as we get back out there. Gotcha. Um, okay. Yeah, so um, what have we, uh, did you have any sort of big takeaways from the Drexel scrimmage? Yeah, you know, the, I think the good news for us is that, you know, we treat those things almost, you know, we don't really even prepare for them the way we're going to prepare for this game here. We kind of like to get thrown in the fire a little bit. And I think some of our deficiencies, you know, certainly showed up. I thought we had great attitudes. We gave very good effort. Um, we played without two guys that I think will play a lot of minutes in that game. So, again, it's hard to judge us in that sense. Uh, but we're able to pull some things that really, you know, I think we can use going forward. And we have used the last week or so in practice. Um, so, actually, Western Connecticut State on Sunday. Yeah. Can you talk about the story behind, because head coach Western yeah, Connecticut a good, State. Yeah, a friend of mine. Yeah. yeah, so can you just talk about your connection and story? Because it seems like it goes way, way. Yeah, back. Guy Rancourt and I lived on the same block. Uh, he's, about, he's about six or seven years older than me. Went to my high school, played at, at my high school. Somebody I, uh, I looked up to, and he, he kind of he looked after me almost like a little brother. Uh, and really, he's kind of the person that got, uh, I would say, gave me the bug to be both a college basketball player and then eventually as he got into coaching, uh, I, I got into coaching, uh, I don't want to say because of him, but uh, I didn't know what probably coaching was if it wasn't for him, right? So I was able to do that and, uh, you know, he's been a great friend and uh, 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 somebody that uh, you know, I've been very close to for a long, long time. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be pretty special though, be coaching, be first head coaching game against someone who you've known since you were like, Yeah, it's, you know, when you think about life coming full circle and, uh, you know, we've been very fortunate to, you know, be able to do this for a long time and, uh, you know, whatever dreams of uh, coaching we, we both had, he's been a very successful Division Three coach. Uh, and, uh, you know, for me to get the opportunity to be the head coach of GW is, uh, you know, a dream. And, uh, for that to happen and for us to be here Sunday doing that is pretty cool. Speaking of Sunday, what are you looking for? from of the team this weekend? Yeah, again, I, it's sort of the same thing we've talked about all summer and into the fall here. Is, you know, I'd, I'd love to play really hard. I'd love to defend the rebound, and I'd love to share the ball you know, uh, and stick together and, and, and hope that we can uh, start to develop a little bit of identity of those things as a, as a, as a group. You know? And um, you know, we're not going to have everybody, uh, but hopefully we're working closer to, to having everybody for our opener. Uh, but it's an opportunity to play with the lights on too. I think that's that's important, especially for our staff, first time going through it. Some of the logistics of just playing a game with the lights on versus scrimmage is, is probably a good thing for us. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Dave, no, no, it's okay. You good? You good? It's I